Yep, so that's it. That's it. Good morning. We'll just wait another minute. Okay, if members could take their seats. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to meeting eight of the Toronto East York Community Council. The chair and members gratefully acknowledge that Toronto East York Community Council meets on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississauga of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also credit, acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, can I have a motion to confirm the minutes of meeting seven? Councillor Wong Tam, all those in favor, opposed, carried. And now we will go to our agenda clearing, which starts on page. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the I do 26 mm -hmm. on page 39. Sorry. Oh, page 48, excuse me. So, item TE. 8.26, appointments to business improvement areas, boards of management. Councillor Cressy, all those in favor, opposed, carried. We started at 26, I'm now on 27. <coughs> Item TE 8.27, 364 Huron Street, official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment applications, preliminary report. Councillor Layton. I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.28, 409 Huron Street, Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Rental Housing Demolition Applications, Preliminary Report. <laughs> Councillor Layton. I'll move the, the staff recommendations again. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.29, please note that this is in Councillor Layton's ward, not Councillor Cressy's. 315 to 325 Spadina Avenue, zoning amendment application, preliminary report. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you. I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.30, 81821 Danforth Avenue, zoning amendment application, preliminary report. Councillor Bradford. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.319 through 25 Dawes Road, zoning amendment application, preliminary report, Councillor Bradford. 
Move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.32, installation, removal of on-street accessible parking spaces, August 2019, delegated. Councillor Cressy, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.33, installation of on-street accessible parking spaces, August 2019, non-delegated. It's only in your word, Councillor Bailan. Good morning, uh, so authorized the installation, so approved recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.34, temporary adjustments to parking regulations for 2019 Toronto Christmas market, delegated. Notice of pending report. There's uh, Oh, there are deputations on this? Yes. Okay. And 3-5, there are deputations as well? Okay, so we'll hold both of those. Sorry, I'm sure I've got all my correct paper. Okay. Item TE 8.36, Accessible Loading Zone, Melita Crescent, Councillor Matlow. I uh, move these staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.37, Commercial Loading Zone, Bathurst Street, Councillor Cressy. Move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.38, Commercial Loading Zone, Elm Street, Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'll move the recommendations in the report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.39, Car Share Vehicle Parking Areas, Various Locations, Delegated. I, I have a question. So we'll hold that for Councillor Bailao. <laughs> Excuse me. Item TE 8.41, Proposed Road Changes Pilot in Rivertown, Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'd like to uh, move this item, please. Thank you, staff, very much. This has gone on for six years. It is trying to provide a, a, a traffic management plan for the first TCHG revitalization where that part of the revitalization was overlooked. Thank you. Okay. So, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.42, extension of permit parking hours, High Park between Annette Street and Dundas Street West. I'll move approval. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.43, extension of permit parking hours, Hector Avenue between Davenport Road and Melita Avenue, Rains Avenue between Davenport Road and Melita Avenue, and Melita Avenue between Rains Avenue and Christie Street. Councillor Matlow, longest title of the morning. Well, well done. Uh, I, 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 I uh, move in support of the staff recommendation. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.44, realignment of parking, parking permit area 7C to exclude the development located at 1832 Eastern Avenue. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, thank you, I move to adopt the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.45, parking amendments, Oak Mount Road. I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.46, parking amendments, Small Street, Councillor Cressy. I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.47, parking amendments, Christie Street, Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'll move the recommendations in the letter. And please, people, don't stop in front of the in front of the Tim Hortons to get a coffee where the TTC pulls their bus in. This has been a constant frustration of the turning bus at Christie. It does this little loop around at Bloor, and there's just cars parked there. So like a bus full of people, a traffic warden. bus full of people just sits there waiting for someone to come back from getting their coffee at the Hortons right there. It's, it, this is hopefully gonna stop that. Congratulations on that bold move. Councillor Layton, all those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.48, parking amendments, Lillian Street and Red Path Avenue. Councillor Matlow, 48. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I move in support of the staff recommendation. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.49, parking amendments, Brownlow Avenue. Councillor Matlow. Move the alternate Do we have the, okay, so uh, can we just, can, can just oh, this put is up the, the wording? You have an amendment? That, no, we just had some revised wording. Revised wording is an amendment. Uh, sure. 
So this is the. I, I move the revised wording amendment. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're all on the same page now. So we'll just take the revised wording amendment. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.50, traffic control signals, Bay Street and Ma St. Mary Street. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Oh, there's a deputant here? Yeah. Before we, uh, the, the deputant is uh, prepared to languish uh, her right to, to speak. Uh, I think we've uh, made, made an agreement. Okay. So I would like to move uh, this, I would like to reverse um, and delete the staff recommendation mm -hmm. and to replace it with a recommendation to install the installation light of lights. So we are moving to install the traffic control signal at the intersection of Bay Street and Mary Street. That is correct. All right. All those in favor of that? Opposed? That carried. Item T 8.51, traffic control signal, Spadina Road and McPherson Avenue. Councillor Matlow. I vote in support. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.52, all-way stop control, Poplar Plains Road and Poplar Plains Crescent. Councillor Matlow. I move the, uh, yes, I, so I move the motion to amend the recommendation. So you're moving for the installation. That's right. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.53, all-way stop control, Mutual Street and Wood Street. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I would like to move um, uh, an amendment, and that is to delete the staff recommendations and to replace it uh, with, do you have that? Sorry. I'm sure we can manage it. Well, okay, sure. I will hold that down. Oh, we're going to hold that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Item TE 8.54, traffic calming speed humps on Gladstone Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Move alternate recommendations. This is the, okay. the so alternate sure. recommendation is to install? To install. Or to go to poll. Oh, to go to polling? To go to polling, yeah. Okay. Yes. I think that's actually the Staff recommendation. Uh, there, there's, 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 two. Error. there's two. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we had to make two motions. I see. Okay. So we're approving. So on this motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.55, traffic calming speed humps, Lonsdale Road. Councillor Matlow. I, uh, I move the alternate recommendation. You have that ready? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay. Item TE 8.56, traffic calming speed humps, Treadway Boulevard. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to move alternate recommendations to install. Okay. So we have the new speed hump king. All those in favor, opposed, carried. It was Councillor Mahevic's duty to put all the speed humps in Toronto, but now it's yours. Item TE 8.57, nominations for appointment to board, the Board of Management of the Ralph Thornton Community Centre. Councillor Fletcher, Ralph Thornton Community Centre Board. Yes, move approval. Moving approval, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.58, appointment of a, a public member to the Moss Park Arena Board, Councillor Wong Tam. Kristen? Perhaps on behalf of the local councillor, I'll move the staff recommendations. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.59, refusal of an application for a Boulevard Cafe permit located at 1638 Bloor Street West, Unit 2, Indian Road, Flankage. So I will move. Oh, that's time Sorry. for 11? I've yeah, gone into the 11 o'clock items. Yeah. What on earth? 11, 11. So where's next? 61? 59 and 60. Yeah. Both timed. Okay, so those are both timed? Yeah. 
Item TE 8.61, Traffic Control Signals Bay Street and Scollard Street. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'd like to defer those indefinitely. Don't be surprised if you see it back here. I just don't want it to keep coming back until we've had the opportunity to discuss with the community. All right, very good. Motion to defer indefinitely. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.62, Parking Amendments, Torbrick Road. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, I'm going to defer this to one cycle, please. Defer to the October meeting? Yeah. October 10th, okay. All those in favor, opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no? yep. Yes, yeah. all those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.63, pedestrian crossing protection, Coburn Avenue and Glebe Mount Avenue. Councillor Bradford. I'd like to move the alternative recommendations, please. Okay. So you're moving to authorize. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.64, speed limit reduction on Glenholm Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Uh, approved recommendations. Moving approval, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.65, 900 and 980, Lansdowne Avenue. Oh, sorry, we have to end. Yeah, these are new business. Sorry about that, sorry. 64 to 78. Go back. Oh, I see what I've done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I need a motion to introduce items 64 through, through 78. Councillor Bailao, all those in favor, opposed, carried. So now we have to go back and do 64 Sorry, again because it hadn't been properly introduced. Okay. Item T 8.64, speed limit reduction on Glenholm. Approve recommendations. Approve the recommendations in the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item T 8.65, 909. 80 Lansdowne Avenue and 30 Powerhouse Street, official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment, traffic control signals, Lansdowne Avenue and Brandon Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Thank you, approve the recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.66, parking amendment, Pelham Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Approve the recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.67, Reducing the speed limit on Winona Drive between Tyrell Avenue and Davenport Road. Councillors Bailao and Matlow. Approve recommendations. All those in favor. <laughs> Whew. Mm -hmm. In a rare show of unanimity. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.68. Parking amendment Scollard Street. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'll move the recommendations in, in the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.69, Always Stop Control Pilot, Oriel Parkway and College View Avenue. Councillor Matlow. I, I move my, my letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.70, Alterations to a Designated Heritage Property <clears throat> in authority to enter into a Heritage Easement Agreement, 199 Bay Street, 25 King Street West. And 56 Young Street, Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, thank you. I would like to hold that down. Okay, we'll hold that in your name. Item TE 8.71, park payment in lieu of parking, 925 Pay Avenue, Councillor Fletcher. I'd like to uh, approve payment in lieu for one space based on the City of Toronto bylaw. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.72, implementing increased cyclist protection at Dundas and Jones. Councillor Fletcher. I'd like to uh, move the recommendations. These are for no right turn on red which have to be done in order to finish off the staff uh, recommended design. This intersection, we intended to have a Dutch, kind of Dutch intersection there, but it's too small. So this is the intersection where Douglas Crosby was uh, tragically killed. So this is what staff have presented. I think it's very fulsome. I'd like to move it here. Uh, I'm not moving those here. I'm moving the complimentary 
No right turn on red for all directions. Okay. All those in favor? Recorded. Are we recorded vote? Councillor Cressy, Councillor Bradford, Councillor Bailao, Councillor Fletcher, Councillor Perks, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Layton, Councillor Matlow. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Item TE 8.74, Knox Avenue, slowing down traffic and keeping people safe. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I would like to uh, move that uh, request here. It is a traffic sewer on that particular street. It's part of my new ward, so I would like to have another look at that as to what we can do. Particularly. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Item TE 8.75, appointment of member, public members to the Ted Reeve Community Arena Board. Councillor Bradford. Like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. <coughs> Item TE 8.76, speed limit reduction Kingston Road between Victoria Park Avenue and Queen Street East. Councillor Bradford. I'd like to move the staff recommendations here, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.77, poll regarding maintaining or removing permit parking on certain streets in Ward 19. Councillor Bradford, I, I would like to have a debate on this. Would you like to hold it in your name? I'd like to hold the item. Yep. Yeah. Item TE 8.78, realignment of permit parking area 9G, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. We forgot number 40. I am told we didn't do item number 40. I thought there were deputations on that. Nope, okay, my mistake. Item TE 8.40, car share vehicle parking areas, various locations non-delegated. Councillor Matlow, all those in favor, opposed, carry. All right. I may have one more piece of new business. Nothing big. Color me surprised. Color you, okay. <laughs> So, now we go back to the 9.30 items. We will begin with item TE 8.1, naming of an existing public lane north of St. Clair Avenue West, extending between Dufferin Street and St. Clair Gardens. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Bailao. Thank you. I would like, like to ask uh, the support of uh, the committee to have this lane named after uh, Sam Ciccolini. Uh, there's um, quite a bit of information on, on the report, but happy to answer any questions if you have some. No? No? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.2, naming of an existing public lane east of Huron Street extending south of Dundas Street West. Councillor Cressy. Uh, very happy to move the staff recommendations for the new Jean Lum Lane. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.3, naming of an existing public lane north of Queen Street West, extending easterly from Crawford Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Cressy. Uh, also very pleased to move the staff recommendations for Trinity Park Lane. All those in favor, opposed, carried. You now know, just because you don't have any. I think you started that. <laughs> oh, you too. Item TE 8.4, naming of an existing public lane located west of Young Street, extending southerly from Elm Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Councillor Layton. Thank you very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations to approve the name Harry Barbarian Lane. Congratulations, Barbarian's Steak Restaurant. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Item TE 8.5, naming of an existing public lane north of Eastern Avenue, west of Logan Avenue, and extending southerly 
from Lois Keston Lane. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Fletcher. Uh, yes, I'd like to move this uh, item, and it's for where the Western Bakery development is, and also note that Lewis Keston Lane, he was a pharmacist on Queen Street who treated everybody there and looked after many of the poor people in our East End, which is kind of like your ward, a lot of poor people, and he was quite the man, so. The Bakery Lane will meet him at that juncture. Wonderful. All those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.6, naming of a proposed private street at 423 Old Weston Road and 1818 18 St. Clair Avenue West. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Bailao. Thank you, uh, and here uh, we're uh, hoping to name the Ed Clark Gardens, and uh, this is a development that has a significant portion of Habitat for Humanity uh, homes, and they would like to honor uh, Ed for his um, long-standing support and um, financial and more than that of, of the organization, so I hope I can count on your support. Okay, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.7, renaming of a portion of Coxwell Avenue between Queen Street East and Lakeshore Boulevard East. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation? Seeing none, Councillor Bradford. Just like to staff recommendations, please. All those in favor, all those opposed, carried. Item TE 8.8, .8, permanent closure of the Boulevard lands on the northwest corner of Phoebe Street and Soho Square. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Cressy. I'll move the staff recommendations, thank you. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.9, permanent closure of the portion of the public lane at the rear of 27 through 37 Yorkville Avenue and abutting 26 Cumberland Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Layton. I'll move the recommendations in the report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.10, we have deputations. We have deputations for 1-1. One, one. So why don't we just move on to 8.10. Okay, so item 8.10, 25 and 35 Liberty Street, 58 Atlantic Avenue, and 5161 and 65 Jefferson Avenue, zoning amendment and rental housing demolition applications, revised final report. I have listed first Mario Miotti. Mario here? Come on up, Mario. So just take a seat there. And there's a, a button in front of you. Make sure it's lit up. Either one's fine. You'll have five minutes and you can watch your time on this clock over here to my right. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mario Miotti. I live at 65 Jefferson, uh, 207. That's in Liberty Village. I'm a photographer by trade, and I've lived there for going on 13 years now. Um, so safe to say these judgments um, will affect us deeply. Um, I've been able to not only live there, but operate my business as well. And it's afforded me, you know, uh, I guess a competitive advantage as well as a lifestyle advantage for these many years. Uh, but more than my case, it's also the um, case of the community, the others that have lived there. Um, having gotten to know them and being a part of their world has been beneficial. And uh, I guess we want to continue that. Want to be able to keep our spot in the community and to have uh, this transition of the development really help us in that regard. 
Um, I know that there were lots of questions about how this will, is gonna look, but I think what we do want um, to focus on in, in, the best, in the best sense is that how we're relocated and the space that we get um, is a fair um, transition in terms of space and also in use, because as myself having a photo studio, it's important to be able to have a space that I can utilize in terms of continuing my business endeavors in Toronto. Um, so with that being said, I just hope that you all take into account um, that we, we do have businesses that we've been running out of there, and we do have a community that we're very connected to, and we wanna make sure that that exists into the future. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, were there any questions for the deputy? No? Um, Terry Demerson. Terry. Oh, it's not Terry. You know what? We'll come back. Um, Madeline, come on up. You just make sure that it's lit. Yeah? Hello? Yeah, there you're good. Okay, so you have five minutes. Okay. Thank you very much for coming down. Um, my name is Madeline Seniore. Um, I'm a resident at 25 Liberty Street. Um, I'm an aerial acrobat. And my neighbors are photographers and dancers and sculptors and painters. And it's more than a rental housing demolition application, it's the loss of an artist community. And I, I hear so much about how we want Toronto to be a vibrant city. And if you don't give the artists anywhere to live or anywhere to work, then where's your vibrance? And that's all I want to say. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? No? Thank you, Madeline. Um, Mark Kemmerer. Good morning, Mark. You'll have five <coughs> minutes. You know the drill. I do know the drill. Thank you. Good morning, <coughs> Councillor Perk, members of committee. Uh, thank you for hearing us today. I am here on behalf of, a, of 13 tenants, existing um, tenants of the, of the building or buildings. And I wanted to speak <coughs> primarily to the proposed tenant relocation and assistance plan. I want to start out by saying, <coughs> firstly, we recognize that the new proposed relocation and assistance plan is a marked improvement over the plan that came before committee and council last year, and that the recognition of live-work units as part of this application is also welcome. There are, however, uh, areas for improvement, some of which aren't, uh, I'll speak to you, but aren't set out necessarily in the package before you, the staff report. They are as follows. Firstly, uh, the principle of like for like replacement. This is a very unique situation of a heritage building hosting an artistic community, which is important for the city's cultural services. In terms of like for like replacement, council is faced <coughs> with the um, ability to have design improvements that will benefit my clients. It's a blank slate right now as proposed. And in our view, at least 12 of the replacement units or 13 of the replacement units uh, for my client should allow for things like higher ceilings and larger units to mirror what the existing tenants have. Again, it's a unique situation, but because we're dealing with what is really a blank slate, that is possible to achieve. The best way to achieve this may be through something like a design charrette. There, as a side issue, but an important issue, is the issue of mezzanines. The replacement units, um, as proposed, <clears throat> would go, for example, for one bedroom for one bedroom. But that doesn't necessarily reflect the reality of what the <coughs> current tenants in their artistic communities are living through. So for example, the mezzanines in the current units aren't counted by city staff because they don't necessarily meet Ontario Building Code requirements. However, they are part of the living space my clients inhabit. 
They are also part of the living space which my clients have to pay for through their rent. And we think the city, the city in terms of the like-for-like uh, -like replacement should recognize this principle as well. And so that the units should be larger, at least the 13 units should be larger than proposed at present. To again, it's, we're not asking for more, we're asking for replacement on a like-for-like -like basis. Secondly, the parking utilities should be included in the rents at no additional charge, as is the case for <coughs> the tenants at present. Thirdly, my clients would like staff to meet with them to ensure that the new rents proposed are accurate. And also, which is not set out in the report, but which is an important part for my clients, is that the rent increases so that my clients will be relocating out of the building they now inhabit for a period we understand of 36 months or three years. When they return to their units, we recognize that they're new units, but they're not, my clients aren't asking for new units, but their return will be faced with the following increases in rent. A 4% one-time increase to recognize the new, new, newness of the units, plus a guideline increase, which applies for every year they aren't in the units. So when they return after three years, if three years is the period, they'll have paid a 4% one percent, they'll be required to pay a 4% one-time increase, plus three years increases of 2% guideline, which is a 10% increase over their current rents. And we don't think that is uh, equitable or fair. That we, my clients understand, of course, there are guideline increases, but a 10% guideline increase is certainly not warranted. And the 4% one-time increase is not warranted. So the plan should be amended to recognize only guideline increases when the tenants move back to their units. The notice to vacate is set out in the report at 240 days. My clients would like that to be extended to 12 months um, so that the plan would be amended in that way. In addition, and this is not necessarily in the report before you, but <clears throat> the compensation for the period when my, tenants when my clients have to relocate should recognize... I'm going to ask you if you have one final thought, you're at your time. Uh, so, <clears throat> compensation should recognize the gap between what they're paying now and what they'll have to pay outside of the building. The plan should recognize that Gerard Barron, who was evicted from the premises, should be included. I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to stop, okay? Perhaps if you have more in writing, you can submit it. Are there any questions of the deputy? So that we'd ask that the plan be amended in ways that I've I, set out. I think you made that clear, yes. Um, no, seeing no questions. Uh, Terry, why don't you come on up? Thank you, Councillor Perks. Are you chair today? I am. Very good. Okay. I have started. My name's Terry Demerson. I'm a resident in 25 Liberty. I've been there for 15 years. I've seen Liberty Village change in every aspect, but I've seen Toronto change in aspects which frighten anyone who is not a homeowner. Rental rates have skyrocketed. We're looking at predatory capitalists who are coming in, buying buildings with the intention of removing tenants at their profit. This is the case here. We have essentially a developer who has bought a slew of properties through Liberty Village in the last few years, who even Councillor Perks last year on May the 3rd in this very council when this matter was before council, admonished him at his tactics and hoped that Toronto would have better developers who didn't behave that way. We still have actions which are being thrust upon us as a community which is detrimental to us. And let me explain how. We are losing what we have. Thank you, apart from that, thank you, Councillor Council, for allowing the developer to contribute into some type of housing and a Section 37 um, monies, which are 1.25 million. You are helping the most needy in the city, but it's not at the developer's expense, it's at the expense of people who are trying to help themselves. 
We are not far above the homeless right now. Some of us have been struggling under the circumstances that we have and that have been brought upon us the last few years, and we're losing now. We're losing our workspaces. The city has said, oh, we're gonna grant live work into this community. We asked that a year ago. We've asked that all along. We appreciate the fact that that is being done now against the zoning, against the city plan, which does not allow uh, residential into the, into the employment lands, but it is being done. It's political will. Thank you for that. But on the backside of that, we are not gaining. We're losing square footage. We're losing the character of our homes. We're losing the ability to work in our homes. Last year, May the 3rd, the proposal was a failure. It was a failure for us. It passed. We're not certain the reason that it was turned down afterwards. Obviously a business matter. And we are here again. Yes, we are getting a little bit more, but you cannot measure this as a success against previously what was a failure when we are still losing. The true measure of success will be how many of us will be able to return to our studios because we are not being provided with what we have now. Let me speak to mezzanines for a minute. Each one of us, the city has assessed four years ago when they came in that our mezzanines are illegal. Under the previous landlord, somehow they were built. My mezzanine was there 15 years ago. It adds roughly one third square footage to my space and it allows me a wide open space. I have roughly 22 foot ceiling through some of the areas where the mezzanine's not located. This allows me to conduct my work as a photographer. This allows my neighbors to conduct their work. You're squeezing us through a sausage machine here at the benefit of the developer. Um, Let's talk language. I can speak in Ukrainian all day, but language is useless unless we understand it. Your language for live work artist studios was never applied to us. You use the language of one bedroom apartments. That's not what we have. We have large open spaces. And the political will was there to add the zoning to get live work back, but the political will was not there to give us what we have now, and we're losing, and it is detrimental to every one of us. Language is important. Moving forward under renovation, under all these uh, things that the city is involved with, I hope the language changes. I hope we still have time to discuss these matters so that we do not lose out the way we're losing now. But like for like is really what, what we're after here. We don't want more, and we cannot do with less. Um, I spoke last time to Heritage. Heritage was political will. Councillor Perk says, well, do we have time to review? Because the Heritage Board agreed that it was worth preserving the entire complex. We had a year to do this. The political will wasn't there. There are two matters that have to be amended to this Gosh, plan. Gosh, I'm going to ask you for one last important. thought. Please. The two matters when we spoke to Jeremy Cloet uh, recently since the report came out had to do with um, the fact that uh, the developer was willing to compensate us in a gap manner after 36 months. We should not take the risk that if the development takes longer than three years, we are not uh, having any gap compensation. Okay, I'm going to have to ask rate. you to stop there. Thank okay, you very much. Are there any questions for the then. deputant? No, seeing none, thank, thank you, you very you. much. Robert Neal Williamson? Five minutes. Not here. Not here? Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? No, seeing none. Are there any questions of staff? No? To speak, Councillor Cressy? Oh, Councillor Wong Tam, you have a question. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, just out of curiosity, based on what the deputants were saying and their, and their solicitor about the like-for-like -like replacement and the comment about uh, mezzanines not being attributable to the Ontario Building Code, uh, is what's in the proposal now for rental replacement like-for-like, -like, meaning square footage usable uh, compared to what is what was already in existence, and what is the square use uh, footage usable in the replacement program? To you, the chair. Um, when we did an assessment of the existing conditions, uh, yes, there are a number of mezzanines that were noted in, in a number of the existing rental dwelling units. 
those existing rental dwelling units that had a mezzanine that met Toronto building code standards or, or the standards on the Ontario building code were included uh, in the GFA calculations for those existing units. The units that did not meet the building code requirements, uh, so mezzanine that, that again, uh, was not constructed in a manner that met those code requirements were not included in the GFA calculations. Overall, the, the GFA for the existing units is replaced in its, so, in its totality. Um, and the average unit sizes uh, by unit type are reflecting of uh, the existing conditions. So does that mean the average unit height is now sitting at approximately 22 feet? I think I heard 22 feet uh, spoken of by one of the deputants. So are all the units 22 feet with clearing height? No, the, the, in terms of ceiling height, they are a regular uh, residential unit. There are some units that are two stories and then there are eight units that are located in the existing heritage building. Those heights would be maintained, uh, but, but about half of the units would have regular residential dwelling unit heights. And so that means we're looking at eight and a half feet, nine feet um, clearing height, is that correct? I don't know the exact height. Um, we have the plans here, hold on. Um, and then with respect to the units that do not meet the Ontario Building Code and recognizing that this is a heritage structure and there's probably many opportunities through the years where additions and amendments were made, how do you reconcile what's legal and what's illegal knowing that there's been a, there's, this, this building spans periods? It's not a 10 year old building, it's, it's, it's significantly older. And the building code itself has been amended through the years, and I think at, at various times there wasn't even a building code. Probably at the construction of this building, there might not have been a fully thought out Ontario building code. Through you, the Chair, we had to use the Ontario building code standards as they currently exist and, and evaluate those existing conditions against that code. And there are portions of these mezzanines, or, or some mezzanines in, in their to totality, that were not included in GFA calculations. So would it be accurate to describe that these residents are actually walking away with less, less clearing height, less ceiling height, less usable square footage? Uh, there are a variety of different unit sizes and, and given that there are only 13 returning tenants potentially, um, they could elect a, a larger unit than what they would normally have had uh, opportunity to do. Uh, with respect to the ceiling heights, again, eight of the units will have the same ceiling height as they do now. Uh, there are about four or five uh, two-story townhouses, uh, but the remaining would have regular residential ceiling heights. And then finally, in the report, it stipulates that there are 42 existing rental units. There are 42 of them coming back online, and yet I think I heard you say there's about 13 returning tenants. N recognizing that the vacancy rate in the City of Toronto is practically zero to less than 1%, uh, what happened to the remaining tenants? I, I, I can't speak for all of those uh, previously or tenants that occupied these units previously. I, I mean, uh, through a long application process, there is some loss, uh, but I, I can't speak to, to why tenants would have left these units. So if those tenants that may have left earlier because of the planning process or perhaps relationships with the landlord, um, and they're not the 13 returning tenants, do those tenants have the right to return? Uh, there are three or four tenants that, that have been identified as past eligible tenants, and, and those tenants would have the right to return. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions of staff? No, seeing none. Councillor Cressy? Uh, well, thank you, Chair. Uh, and I'll move the recommendations here and, and say a few words. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the deputants and all the tenants who have been working closely both with our city staff, but also with our office uh, over the last six to nine months. Um, and as well, I want to thank our city staff because there have been a lot of changes in the last, over the course of the last year, uh, and that's in large part due to their hard work. Um, I think the context here, uh, and we've talked about this today, is a site that uh, was rezoned and had critical rental units within it, live work rental units, but rental units within it. And so from a city perspective, on the one hand, we have the objective of maintaining purpose-built rental, not losing units. And then we have a, another objective that one of the deputants spoke Councillor, to. Councillor, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the clerk 
uh, is asking, did you have a motion on this item that you wanted to move? Oh, I had a technical amendment from staff. Sorry, let me Sorry move to that. have interrupted. Thank you. Uh, forgive me. I have the technical amendment that staff had provided based on the changes in front of us. Um, and then I also have uh, moving the recommendations. Um, those two objectives, one of maintaining rental, the other is of sharing arts and culture uh, within our city. And what we're looking at here today is, I think, a vastly, thanks to staff, improved rental replacement policy that allows for both. Um, there have been not only significant improvements to meet both of those objectives around arts and culture and rental, but I will tell you, having worked on far too many Section 111 agreements around rental replacement, that this is among the best rental replacement packages I've ever seen. It goes far and above the act at the provincial level. Uh, it allows for 42 rental replacement units on site. That wasn't the case before. Uh, it ensures that for 14 units at affordable and mid-range rents are protected. There has been an increase in sizes that due to building code issues is not where we wish it could be. But I think because the process of moving, getting a unit back is one thing, then you actually have to go through a process of moving. That is not easy. That is not fun. And the, based on the enhanced relocation assistance package here, it goes far and above based on negotiations what is required. What is required under the Act is 120 days to vacate. There are 240 days permitted here. Uh, there's additional compensation for moving allowance. There's additional compensation in, in full stop that's in, in place. And so, listen, this is not easy. For tenants, this is hardest of all. Uh, but we are operating, this isn't a question of political will, it's a question of the law. And we operate under, under provincial laws and through the diligence and hard work of staff and tenants who have advocated for their rights working together, we've been able to do under the law to go above and beyond what would have been permitted through those negotiations. Um, I wish it was, we all wish it was different, but this is, based on the law in front of us and based on a significant negotiation, the best that the city can do under its provisions to ensure that people can not only return to on site, but continue to practice both living in a rental, but also their arts and cultural craft as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for the mover? Anyone else to speak? No? Okay, so uh, we'll take this amendment and the rest of the uh, item all together as one vote. All those in favor? All those opposed, that carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we now move to item TE 8.11, um, 56 Young Street, 21 Melinda Street, 18 to 30 well Wellington Street West, 187 to 199 Bay Street, and 25 King Street West Zoning Amendment Application Final Report. We do have two deputants. Um, this is Councillor Councillor Wong Tam, there's um, a, a supplementary report, so my advice is that we take them all as one and only have one set of deputations. Okay. okay. Uh, George, come on up. You know the drill. Welcome. You know the drill, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Council. We're not going to take five minutes. This is Mr. Toby Wu. I'm George Stark from Urban Strategies. We, we did appear uh, before you earlier in the summertime and referred back to allow us to complete a Section 37 discussion. We wanted just appear today to thank uh, the staff of the Councillor's Office and the Planning Department who worked with us over the summertime to conclude um, those discussions. We're pleased with the outcome of them. It does include a $12.5 million contribution to affordable housing and uh, streetscape and public realm improvements in the financial core. You do have a supplemental report in front of you and we're also um, in, in favor of the contents of that report as well. So I would stand to you, Mr. Chair. Well, that was painless. Are there any questions? No, seeing none. Any questions of staff? Nope, Councillor Wong-Tam. 
Yes, thank you very much. I would like to move the, uh, the recommendations in the staff report plus the, that of the supplementary report, uh, just slightly amending the Section 37 agreement. Uh, as Mr. Dork had alluded to, as spoken to, I should say, uh, there is a sizable um, uh, contribution going directly into the Affordable Housing Resolving, uh, Revolving Fund. Uh, the quantum is $12.4 million. $5.1 million were valued of uh, streetscape improvements and a million dollars of public art contribution. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the fact that we were able to sort of resolve some of those challenges and the differences over the summer, I want to thank the applicant for, for their patience and working with uh, myself and city staff. Um, but more importantly, I think that this, uh, this particular application uh, represents uh, for the, the financial district, and you'll note that there's a letter of support from the financial district BIA as well, uh, sp supporting the recommendations of the staff as well as the package uh, that I've just noted, is that uh, there is, a, a, uh, there is um, some enthusiasm about you know, what can happen uh, with the revitalization okay. of Commerce Court, which is one of the uh, 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 iconic uh, significant uh, uh, Class A building uh, in the city. We know that uh, there's lots of, uh, of changes afoot, especially in the global financial markets when it comes to office buildings and office locations. And I think that they're getting ahead of, uh, of what they are going to be uh, having to compete with uh, as uh, headquarters around the world have choices of where they get to go. And so this will be a very significant addition uh, to the, the financial core of the city. And I look forward to uh, to this uh, this project coming to uh, to completion, and thank you to city planning staff. I know they've worked extremely hard uh, over the summer to get this right. There are a lot of little minute details that uh, we really haggled over, and I think we we landed in a very good place. So thank you. Thank you, uh, members. Yes. Councillor Fletcher has indicated she has a question. No, no question. Oh, okay. Question of councillor. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify the uh, affordable housing component. And there is, um, I think it's number Roman numeral 3A. There's $12.4 million to be allocated at your discretion. And this is the provision of new affordable housing and local streetscape improvements. Um, are you, how, how are you? dividing that $12 million for housing and for streetscape? Uh, we, sure, of course. So the streetscape improvement is broken up into two pieces, uh, one specifically that's touching uh, all the spaces that are abutting the, um, uh, the site itself, and it's a significant site, it is Commerce Court, uh, and then a portion of that, uh, $5.1 million, is also to the streetscape improvements throughout the financial uh, district catchment area. And then the $12.4 million uh, will be obviously put into the resolving fund. And we have worked it with uh, Sean Gadden in the past as he's identified projects that, uh, that he could draw from and he's brought that to our attention. Or perhaps I've actually su uh, suggested to developers and Cancer Cancer Belai uh, is nodding, is that I've actually specifically sought out uh, sites in Ward 13 and, and, uh, and drawn from those funds. So the uh, just by way of example, 63 and 50, um, 63 and 65 Homewood Avenue is probably a great example. We turned that around very quickly, and it is now home for a number of uh, Indigenous men who have been experiencing homelessness, homelessness run by NAMI Res. Sometimes we will actually draw those funds, in, so that's for new housing. Sometimes we've drawn those funds specifically for capital improvements for TCHC. Uh, just about every single building in the old Ward 27 has received some form of affordable housing dollars from Section 37. Um, so it really depends on what opportunities exist and, uh, and oft oftentimes how do we drive it to an outcome so we can spend the money as quickly as possible. So I'm just back to the amount, mm -hmm. the breakdown compared to B, which is local street streetscape improvements of the 12.4, what's your anticipation of? So it's five. The way I'm reading this. So it's 5.1. So if you actually move your eyes further uh, yep, to the I first. Yeah, I see it 5.1. Yeah, so it's, yep. so it's roughly 5.1, and it's carved out in 3.271 for adjacent to the uh, to the site, 1.829, which is uh, the balance of the 5.1 that's that is in the financial district catchment area. And then there's an additional uh, 12.4. So it's not 5.1 out of the 12.4 is 12. I, I'm oh. looking here. 3A is new affordable housing. B, the provision of local streetscape coming out of the 12.4. That's my confusion. Uh, no, it's there. There are two separate things. 
So it's 12.4 and 5.1 plus 1 million for. I see that, but can you, when you're looking there, Councillor, what's B all about? Maybe the staff can be clearer on that. There's A, the provision of new affordable housing. Is 12.4 to be allocated? I think, uh, Councillor, uh, A and B speaks to when the, um, when the quantum is payable, and it's payable at the issuance of the above grade permit. Okay, that, I think that's a bit confusing, actually. So I think it should be clarified. It is confusing. It looks like it's coming out of the 12.4, the way this is written. I, Technically, the way this is written, that's what sure. it is. Uh, but then in that case, I'll ask staff to speak to it because I think that the way they wrote Maybe it to help us understand, uh, Kelly or Linda or somebody, just clarify the language for us, please, so we understand. Talk amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. We'll just be a minute. <laughs> I think if you read the entire Section 37 agreement, it, it reads... No, I, I, I'm reading it. I got it. I want that clarified, though, so it's great if they do that. While we're waiting, shall I nope. reopen something and add... No, on? okay, fine. Whatever nope. you want. Want staff You're the big boss. Says towards exactly with a colon. So, can you enlighten us <laughs> through the chair? Um, I, I, I do agree that the the language in the recommendations is confusing the way it's it's written, and I think we should we should perhaps. Um, revise that and bring it back. The, the intention was, as the councillor has stated, that there is um, just over five million for streetscape improvements um, adjacent to the site and within the financial district, 12.4 for affordable housing, plus one million for public art. So there are three separate allocations. Um, and I do think the wording of the recommendation should be revised slightly just to make it, it crystal clear that that was the intention. Thank you. It's not clear right now. Just, Thank you just to much. move, just to expedite the business, um, I think everyone understands what the intention is. Can we approve this here and have you work with the applicant and the councillor to make sure you have language that completely is crystal clear to everybody in time for council? Is that a possible way of going forward? Yeah? And I, I personally don't need to be involved because it's actually in the original staff report. It was just simply slightly amended for the supplementary. Yes, I, I understand. So I'll, I'll leave that to staff and the, uh, and the applicant. Okay. Yeah, is that satisfactory? Yes, we'd be happy to do that. Okay, then. So with that, um, all in favor? Yes. We'll, just approve, we'll approve this and, and we'll... We, uh, we won't even write a motion. We'll just okay. trust in the, in the competence and goodwill of all the parties involved. Okay, so all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councillor Flesher, you have a point of order? Yes, I'd just like to reopen 8.41, which is the Rivertown um, pilot project, and have a recommendation, alter the recommendation, so that it reads that the traffic management pilot project expected to be from May 2020 to September 2020. So putting a time frame on that, Mr. Chair, and I believe that the clerk has that amendment. Okay, and so you reopen, have with the council just that. Good, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, motion to reopen. All those in favor, opposed, carried. On the amended item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay. <clears throat> item GE 8.12, City Initiated Zoning Bylaw Amendment, McCleary Media City, Turning Basin, Portlands, 
185 to 450 Commissioner Street North, 101 to 495 Commissioner Street South, 625 through 811 Lakeshore Boulevard East South, 17 to 75 Basin Street, 185 Villiers Street, 115 Salter Street, 120 Bouchette Street. Um, and also please note that uh, as in the last item, there is also a supplementary item 12A and we'll be taking the two of them together. 13, we're two, uh, anyway, that's fine. No, we have different, yep, do you want to take? No. Where's the supplementary? 12A. I have Adrian Litovisky. I probably said that wrong. I put an extra vowel in. Litovsky. Litovsky. My apologies, Adrian. Please, you have five minutes. Good morning. Um, as mentioned, my name is Adrian Litovsky. My planning firm is Johnston Litovsky. And uh, before I get into uh, my presentation, I, I do note that I am registered to speak twice, once uh, for uh, two different clients. But I realize now that, in fact, one of those deputations should actually be under item 13. Uh, so I apologize for the confusion, but uh, so I have only one deputation under this item here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so just to, uh, to clarify, I am here on behalf of TVG Partners, and they are the owners of 300 Commissioner Street. And... Um, they are proposing to construct a self-storage facility and have in fact secured site plan approval and I, am under, I understand they either have or are indeed very close to securing building permit approval and the, the only reason really I, I'm here today is to simply go on the record that we are here and we are monitoring uh, this bylaw, city initiated zoning bylaw amendment uh, and we note that the proposed changes uh, in many ways extend uh, use permissions and prohibitions that were put forward by an interim control bylaw. And on this particular property, my client's property, uh, they would in fact, the, the new exception would remove the warehouse uh, storage class A, which is a self storage use. However, I do also note that there is a provision near the end of the amendment in front of you that would then exempt my client's property from this prohibition to allow their uh, site plan to proceed. So just here to say that uh, we're grateful for that inclusion and uh, my client will indeed be proceeding. If anything though, I guess the, the one concern my client would have uh, is to simply note that this was a bit of a surprise uh, the amendment. We weren't aware of this coming forward and uh, and w one reason why I say that is my client did not receive uh, public the public notice or notice of the intended zoning change and I would like to uh, so therefore we didn't really have the opportunity to write in uh, an otherwise fairly simple letter to note that. I'm just here today to make sure that we're on record and uh, I look forward to working with staff to fix the notice issue. Otherwise um, Thank you for your time, and if there's any questions or anything like that, I'm here for you. Thank you. Are there any questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Luke Savoy. Good morning, Luke. Good morning. You have five minutes. My name is Luke Savoy. <clears throat> I'm uh, Vice President and uh, Chief Commercial Officer for Windsor Sulk. Um, we're here to, uh, I'm appearing on behalf of uh, Windsor Salt. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to provide comments on the proposed amendments uh, to zoning bylaw 438-86 uh, and to describe the impact that those amendments will have on the Windsor Salt's operation. Who we are, Windsor Salt produces and supplies over 200 evaporated and rock salt products, including as control salt, and has been operating for over, over 125 years and employs over 800 people across Canada. Windsor, Windsor Salt has supplied the, the City of Toronto ice control salt requirements either in whole, whole or in part for over 50 years. Um, the city uh, uses approximately 180,000 tons of salt to keep its street and sidewalks safe. 
Windsor Salt supplies more than half of the ice control to the city. We supply an additional 75,000 tons to the Ontario Ministry of Transportation. The salt delivered to and from the facility is used by public and private customers, including the city and the uh, MTO. Ice control salt is a critical component of the city's winter maintenance. It is vital to ensure the safe and efficient functioning of the city's road system throughout the winter. Uh, compatibility remains uh, a serious concern with this proposed bylaw. An integral part, integral feature of the port's land is that it contains an operating commer commercial industrial port. It is a commercial reality that industrial uses, including ours, generate emission, including noise and dust, that are not compatible with more sensitive uses. N nonetheless, several of the districts proposed in the bylaw permit users that are not compatible with the existing industrial users as the port plans. The maritime hub permits public garden, museum and eating establishment uses. These uses should only be permitted if they are located a sufficient distance from the existing industrial users. Similarly, parks and open spaces should not be located near the ex exiting, uh, existing industrial users. In addition to the noise, dust and vi vibration associated with heavy industrial uses, there are safety concerns that make park and open space particularly inappropriate for the area. Transport Canada imposes strict security requirements whenever vessels are docked at the facility, and our own company policy is as strict as this. Noise, vibration, dust, and other environmental studies show, uh, should be completed by the city before determining where these uses may be located, if anywhere, within the Portlands area. These are matters of uh, incompatibility that should be addressed before the zoning bylaw is provided to Council. Being able to much. operate is one thing, being able to operate safely is a different thing, and it's all about you know, environmentally and the safety here. Are those all your comments? Yes, thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? Yes. Councillor Fletcher. Um, I'm assuming that you or your client was involved in the Portland's planning framework. Over the me, I can't hear. That you or your client was involved in the Portland's planning framework. Yes, they were, uh, our company participated. Pardon me? Our company participated. Yes. In and that Windsor Salt is part of the larger land users group that has been part of the discussion around the planning framework and the zoning. Exactly. Then I'd like to ask, so this isn't new to you, um, and I'd like to ask if you have ever seen any of the designs that have been shown for very ultra-modern buildings, uh, beautiful modern design for salt retention that's used in a number of parts of the world that we don't use here. Have you seen any of those? I've seen some of them, and our people have seen many of them, uh, but there's no doubt in unloading vessels, you know, that have booms 60 feet in the air uh, going across. If you have people, on it, it is a safety factor. Yes, more than likely. Now you're talking about the Dawn Greenway, that you're uncomfortable with the Dawn Greenway, which has been in plan since 1985 running in that location. Are to be you honest, I think that we have my colleague representing the industry later on that might cover that. We, we have uh, Lena from our company representing a group following my intervention discussing in more details this area. So you're aware that since 1985, the Dawn Greenway, which has now been uh, ensconced in the Portland's planning framework, has been running in that exact location, has been cited in the exact location you're concerned about. Yes. So I can't, I don't even want to do the math. How many years is that? I'm not sure how many years. Uh, all, I'm, all I know 49. is that the, the different usage in the future, uh, in our eyes, will present a public safety. But those uses have been in sight <laughs> for 40 some years. Where we are uh, actually today, where our locations are today? That design has been there since 1985. Are you aware of that? I was, we've been servicing for the last 50 years, so that would make sense. I don't know exactly what year. 1985 and unlocking the Portlands. Makes that sense. is the Dawn Greenway. It's always run there and there's provisions and work to make sure that everything is compatible. And that's why I'm asking you about the 
kind of new ultra modern designs that you could, um, as the port lands changes, if your salt remains there, and I understand it will, to contain it in a way that adds to the landscape. Well, it's compati compatibility that we, we question here. Right. I, I guess you've been questioning that since 1985 then. Uh, but more so lately, when yes. we see the, the, the increased uh, presence you. of, of uh, people walking around. I mean, they, they, we are operating heavy equipment. I get it. Here. No, I do get in it. Vessels. Thank you. That's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. Councillor Wong Tan. Uh, yes, thank you very much for your answers. I think that was very illuminating for me. Uh, with respect to uh, competing uses in a, in a legacy industrial area, uh, do you see it viable? Uh, into the foreseeable future, or even the near future, that Windsor Salts can stay and continue to operate uh, if there are sensitive uses being introduced? Uh, can the two coexist? We don't think so. We, we don't think so. We think that there's, it is a safety hazard, and the noise and the dust coming out of the vessel when we unload uh, will always be a factor. You know, we have stockpiles all across Canada, and we have quite a bit of experience on this. And when we see the designs, we feel that there will be an issue. What we're asking is certainly for a study uh, in evaluating these risks. Uh, I recognize that in the report the, um, there is a, an additional phase of work that still needs to come and that's specifically getting into the build form and the design components. Um, are, you, are you jumping ahead by saying that it will not be compatible um, because that work hasn't even begun yet as, as, as I read this report? Well, we have concerns. Of course, we have concerns. Uh, and what we're recommend, recommending is that studies be made to evaluate the risk factors. And will your company be undertaking individual um, uh, studies on, on your own to perhaps consider some of the comments um, and the suggestions coming from Councillor Fletcher, modern structures, structures that could probably mitigate some of the environmental impacts, some, some, some improvements that could allow for the coexistence of the, of the, of the industrial use and the sensitive use? Uh, is the city going to do some, some studies on that before acting? Uh, good question. I think that's what's contained in the report. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm, I'm asking, Will, is Windsor Salt prepared to undertake some of those studies, recognizing that this, that this new planning regime is coming into to effect? Um, and, uh, and recognizing that the harbor has always had a, an industrial legacy, but harbors across the world are evolving. They are changing. And so are you being proactive to take a look at how you can still stay in place and continue to operate for the next 150 years um, by making some of those modern adjustments? It, it's to make more modern adjustments, of course, we'll look at what we have, uh, what's possible. But prior to that, we don't have the definite plans, the definite uh, final structure. So it becomes very difficult to do uh, some studies. And one factor that we have to, to weigh in here is that, you know, salt at the uh, port, uh, the only salt could come in at, at the economical price is with vessels. And uh, it does create a safety hazard if, if the area is not well protected. So over and above noise and dust, we are very concerned about safety. Uh, and from what we saw in the studies that we've made, uh, we would have issues with environment, uh, uh, in, uh, with the, uh, uh, federal laws on safety. So, so I'm not sure which one comes through the chicken or the egg here. You know, the study from the the, the uh, Toronto City about their views, and then we could take it from there. With once we have the infrastructure, but to start without the final plans is kind of difficult to do. I understand. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have listed. No, I think those are the only deputants on this, this portion. Um, are there any other members of the public who wanted to make a deputation on this item before we could take it into committee? No? Are there questions of staff? Uh, Councillor Fletcher? Yes, I do. Um, this is to match up whoever is answering. There you are. Question of staff. Councillor Wontan, if we could just... Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Councillor, could you please repeat the question? The Portland's planning framework has particular, we have a planning framework, 
And this zoning is simply to be able to implement the planning framework that we have approved. I guess it was almost coming up two years ago. Do I have that right? To you, Mr. Match Chair. That's generally correct. Specifically, this zoning bylaw implements the uh, framework with respect to some but not all of the Portlands, and specifically those districts of the Portlands that are planned to continue to be focused on employment-related uses. So the Don Greenway, which has been a design and then implemented or uh, nested into the Portlands planning framework, designed in 1985 and finally in 2017, I guess, it became written in stone, put in the Bible there. You're not planning to build that tomorrow. That's just in there as its location, as things change. That's correct. The policy framework continues to show the greenway in that location. The zoning bylaw that's recommended by this report permits a park in that location, as does the current zoning bylaw in force today. However, this does not create any timeline to implement that green space, and certainly doesn't provide any budget or specific designed to, to implement that green space. So I think the applicant, and uh, you may have made this clear previously, or perhaps it wasn't clear to them, but the Don Greenway is not expected to be built at this moment and interfere in any way with their salt operation. It just is being ensconced in that plan so that that's now the Bible. When things change, that is, some, that is the location it will be built in at some point in time. That's correct, and that's the reason why the staff uh, recommendations are to address potential uh, issues related to the interface between industrial operations and the Greenway through a set of urban design guidelines so that at some point in future when there is actually intent to implement that Greenway, there is a set of principles in place for a park designer or landscape architect to rely on to understand how to manage those two adjacent uses. And we do have two adjacent uses at Sugar Beach. We have unloading and loading of, of sugar. We have big boats there. We have a park there. there. We have some experience in making sure that everybody's safe and everybody's business gets to be done, whether it's public business or, or private business, such as the important salt uh, storage and distribution that exists there on the, uh, in, the turning, in the ship channel. I'd, I'd say that's correct, and I'd say generally across the city, park uses are permitted in employment areas, so um, this isn't a, an issue that's unique to the waterfront. It's, uh, these uses exist next to each other in other parts of the city. And this well. is city land, all of it, including the salt. Uh, that's correct, yeah. and I believe uh, it's salt under long-term you know, lease to the, uh, yeah. to the Thank users. Thank you. Thanks very much. I hope that helps the deputant understand that this isn't a next week that we're looking at. Are there any other questions for staff? No? To speak? Councillor Fletcher? I'm just going to be supporting this. I, I think that uh, there has been a long process. I hope I clarified that with Mr. Connect. What? I'm sorry, I'm moving the supplementary. And I'm moving the motions. I'm moving all the motions. Thank you very much. Um, that there is always, always a very robust consultation with land users in the port and uh, the types of uses that we're looking at being contiguous, very, very carefully done and carefully planned. I would like to say that I have been shown by, by Mr. Williams, actually, who's not here today, salt storage in other cities on the waterfront, and it, uh, these are actually magnificent, magnificent, exciting urban design forms that I'm hoping at some point we will be able to get to that with um, Windsor Salt and others that are sitting on the south side of the ship channel as we start to look at what that would look like, that um, they would start to look like that rather than tarped salt piles. And understanding that these are uses that are coming in by ship, which is helpful. They're not being driven in. There's, uh, they're coming in by ship. Yes, they're being driven out. But there are these really critical industries in the portlands that exist. This salt is actually one of them. And um, I know staff are looking at, is there anywhere to relocate any of these really considerably important industries or city divisions and departments? So that is another step in all of the portlands planning that is currently being worked on, but I'd say perhaps uh, missing from forecasting that that's actually what's underway here in this report. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any questions? Anyone else to speak? No? Um, let's take the amendment, the supplementary, and the main report all as one vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. So we mount, now move to TE 8.13, the Portland Zoning Study, Zoning Review Study, final report. Uh, this is related but separate. Uh, Mr. Savoie, did you have comments on this one? You registered? No? Uh, Lena Kaleva? Morning, Lena. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Lena Kaleva. I'm here with uh, Winter Salt. Uh, Could you get a little closer to the microphone, please? We're having trouble hearing you. Uh, my name is Lena Kaleva. I'm Perfect. with Winter Salt, representing the Toronto Industry Network of Portlands Group. Joining me is uh, Christian Chan, uh, retained by the TIN as a planner to review the uh, zoning bylaw and the Portlands planning framework. Um, following TIN members um, in the Portlands will be directly affected by the proposed um, zoning bylaw amendment. Um, Um, so the following members are directly affected by the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Lafarge on Polson Street and Commissioner Street. St. Mary Cement on Commissioner Street. Windsor Salt on Unwin Avenue. And other 10 members in the Portlands not in the zoning bylaw area are Waterford Group on Basin Street and Red Bass Sugar having storage in the port. Our request is to the Community Council to move that City Council direct the Chief Planner, Planning Staff, and General Manager of Economic Development Culture to meet with 10 members and uh, 10 members affected in the proposed uh, zoning bylaw, bylaw 569 uh, 2013, to resolve the outstanding matters and report back to the Council um, October 2nd Council meeting. If you go to the 10th letter filed for the item 813, where TIN has identified the members' big, uh, big picture concerns. A number of the TIN's initial concerns were addressed and clarified after the review of the, of the um, Portland's planning framework and the zoning study. And last Friday's um, uh, meeting with the chief planner, the planning staff, and uh, general manager of economic development and culture. TIN members in the Portland's are marine-based industries, a marine being the greenest form of transportation where access to the dock wall and adjacent, uh, adequate space adjacent to the dock wall are critical. These members uh, provide essential services to the city and just-in-time deliveries. Asking councillors to go to the 10th letter on pages um, uh, two through five, which uh, so um, remaining concerns. Um, adequate buffering uh, to the 10 members operates in the Portlands. Yes, they are heavy industry. And safety, health and safety concerns are obviously important. Um, interface with the vessels along the dock wall would be impossible with the water's edge promenade, a walkway. Uh, with the interface of the vessels, um, we need to provide port security, which is regulated by Transport Canada. And health and safety concerns as well um, with anywhere uh, around uh, operating the vessels. Um, operational uncertainty of Windsor South location and uh, with the construction of Don Creekway South and any other bridges in the area would eliminate Windsor South's operation. I'd like to add that uh, Port Toronto has also expressed a concern in regards to limiting access to the uh, to the dock wall. Thank you to the city staff for the last Friday's meeting and clarification on the zoning bylaw regulations on visual uh, barrier requirements, parking requirements open and bulk storage. We note that the city considered existing TIN member use and operations in the Portlands as legally non-complying, and that the proposed zoning bylaws um, permit the land uses operations of TIN members on the sites. Um, and we would like to look at the, the future of, the, of the, uh, the Portlands, not only 10 years, but also 20, 20, 30 years into the future. As we can um, probably imagine, um, cars will be still, still on the roads in the future as well. And we wish to secure future opportunities to discuss the, the proposed uh, zoning bylaw amendment uh, with the city planning and create TO to clarify and resolve 10 members' concerns prior to the October 2nd uh, city council meeting. And we also request to be provided um, notice to the city's decision in regards to the Toronto and East York Community Council item 813. We thank you for the time. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. 
Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? No, seeing none. Thank you very much. Next, uh, Adrian Litovsky. Hello again. Um, for this deputation, uh, we are acting on behalf of uh, Lafarge Wholesome, the owners and operators of the cement terminal at 54 Polson Street. And uh, this uh, property would be subject to the new, um, oh sorry, forgive me, the, the, they do operate the 54 Polson Street, Street cement terminal, but in this particular case, they also operate the uh, concrete batching and aggregate storage facility at 535 Commissioner Street, forgive me, that's the property in question that I'm sp speaking to and that is subject to the new proposed East Port bylaw. And uh, one thing I do simply want to mention is to say thank you to city staff. Uh, they have been uh, very cooperative and we appreciate their efforts to work with Lafarge. We've had an ongoing discussion with them over quite, quite some time. And uh, you will see that you have on file uh, today a letter from Ms. Kim Mullen of Wood Bull uh, saying, uh, very much the same thing and that uh, we appreciate the changes that have been made to the bylaw to accommodate the existing facility of 535 commissioners. There really only remain a couple of uh, technical concerns uh, which are set out in Ms. Mullen's letter. Specifically, uh, there is a requirement in the bylaw for an opaque barrier or screen for open storage areas. There have been some beneficial changes to Lafarge in terms of how that screen would be defined. Uh, questions on our part, however, remain um, in seeking some clarity as to exactly where on the property that screen may be required. There are uh, one provision, uh, it stated such a screen would be required along the street frontage, or the way the wording is provided in the bylaw, it may also be required on all lot lines. And um, uh, I think in Lafarge's case at the uh, Commissioner Street facility, uh, a screen along the Commissioner Street frontage, uh, I don't think that is an issue, but the bylaw could be read in such a way that the screen may re be required around the entire property, which of course is problematic because a good portion of that lot line is uh, the seawall and uh, wh where shipping is received, uh, materials are received by boat, and so a screen doesn't make much sense there. So I'm sure this is a matter we can clear, clarify with staff. Uh, a s another smaller item that I believe still needs uh, some discussion is a provision in the bylaw whereby parking would not otherwise be permitted in the front yard in this particular instance. Um, that is where parking is today, and so there would be a, a bit of a conflict created by the bylaw there. And secondly, uh, due to the nature of the facility, the fact that much of the remaining area relates to the dock wall and the delivery of goods, really the only logical place for uh, either uh, visitor or employee parking is in the front yard in this case. So some smaller items, but uh, I look forward to working with staff on them and as does Lafarge. Otherwise, we're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions? No, nope, seeing none. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, any questions of staff? Yes. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, you've had a couple of meetings now with some of the deputants just around their concerns and trying to accommodate anything as well as accommodate, meet the plan that's in place. So are you prepared, uh, I've, even if this just passes and goes straight to council, do you have time that you could continue to meet to clarify some of these issues like this, where they're parking, et cetera. And it's also my understanding that the dock wall and the use of the dock wall is a pretty robust part of everybody's plan at the moment, in particular because it means nobody is driving anything. It's a very efficient, climate-friendly way to bring materials in. Could you comment on both of those, please? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, would we be willing to meet with uh, the stakeholder, the industrial stakeholders in the Portlands? Absolutely. 
we've met with them before. One of the principles of the bylaw that's come forward, as you can see, is that while we are setting the stage for the ongoing evolution of the portlands, um, we certainly are not interested in pushing out existing industrial users. users. We'd rather have them continue to evolve uh, where they're located and certainly take advantage of the unique resource that is the port in Toronto. Uh, so we'd be happy to continue to meet with them up to the October 2nd meeting. Um, and uh, with respect to the dock wall access, certainly the, the intent of that bylaw provision is to screen undesirable activity, but certainly not to um, prohibit or obstruct access between uh, the dock wall and the shipping activity that occurs along the dock wall and the properties that rely on, on that transportation solution. And Mr. Williams has been in these conversations as, has, as head of economic development, I presume, and he would continue to be at the table for these further conversations between now and October 2nd? That's correct. And can I just ask a follow-up? Uh, perhaps for council, you could let me know. SROC went from its, the silo location into the East Port area, and they have a site plan that requires a number of things, including beautification of the site. I'm not sure all of those requirements have been met yet, so perhaps without moving a motion, you could undertake at council to let me know exactly what's missing as far as their compliance with the site plan. Uh, they're operating there, but I don't believe they're operating within their... Yeah, I don't, I don't have that information. Yes, I know you don't, but I'm asking. Certainly we can do that. As an industrial user that was trying to beautify their site uh, and with an urban design lens, I'm not sure that's actually been accomplished, so I think it would be helpful to understand where that's at. Yes, yeah, certainly we can do anyway that, and also in consultation with our colleagues at CREATE TO, who have some Yes, yes, that. thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, Councillor Fletcher to speak. Yes, I'll move uh, number 13. I want to thank the staff and Mr. Williams for meeting with those who are concerned, the industrial users in the port, recognizing that the city has been very careful to uh, be clear that there's uses there that will remain there for the foreseeable future. It's kind of how East meets West, and if there are any um, physical changes that simply kind of update those industries, that's helpful. That's why I asked about SROC, because they really did attempt to do that and understanding there, there are critical industries that service the downtown area. Nobody uh, at the city is trying to run anybody out of town. I think we've been clear on that the entire time since we started the Portland's planning framework. We've got to work around those until there's a magic spot that opens up or we don't use salt anymore, for instance. If you don't want your roads salted, perhaps, Councillor Matlow, we can get rid of those, but I think your residents expect that. When we get rid of salt, then perhaps that industry won't be required there. But there are a number of industries there, and the interface between the new uses, the new growth, the new development, the plans, and the existing industries is really critical. So getting that right is important because both are going to coexist. Uh, Cherry Beach has coexisted with all of these uses forever. Uh, as you well know, it's a big use. The park will be built out a bit more and for the foreseeable future, we'll have this type of tension. So I think this table that is with planning and economic development and others is a really critical place to kind of hammer these things out on timing. And it is um, just a useful way to do that because the future is moving, you're not. Uh, the city is also looking at where, I'm just going to speak about this for a second, on the first golf site, the city has 25 acres worth of services that service every single ward of each and every one of us, parks, roads, MLS, and in order to free that entire 68 acre site up, those have to be moved. There's discussions about where those could be moved. I am sure you agree with me, colleagues, that we can't move uh, servicing for Toronto and East York or downtown up way up into the outer regions of the city. It's not efficient and you simply don't get to service our parks from, let's say, North York. Doesn't make sense to me, might make sense to you, but that's still a discussion that we'll be having 
around those other properties as well. So just to bring you into servicing your wards and where everything is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? No? Uh, so uh, on the item, all those in favor? Opposed, that carried. Okay, members, I want to just tidy up a couple little bits of business. Um, Councillor Wong Tam, you need to reconsider item TE 8.50. Uh, yes, I'd like to reopen that, please. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. And, and uh, you have a, a motion? Yes, I would ask uh, the clerk to place the motion onto the screen. Okay. We did it rather quickly this morning, so it would, uh, we thought we this would This just cleans up that language. Yeah, that's right. All right, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. I also need a motion to introduce a few new pieces of business from 8.79 through 8.83. They've been circulated, members. Can I have a motion? Councillor Bradford, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay. Returning to the regular agenda, TE 8.14215 Lakeshore Boulevard East, draft plan of subdivision final report. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, are there any questions of staff? No. Uh, this is. Just give me a second. Let me catch up with my paperwork here. For me, Councillor Cressy. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll move the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 8.15141 Bay Street, application to remove the holding symbol from the zoning bylaw, final report. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Are there any questions of staff? No. Councillor Cressy? 815141 Bay. I'm going to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. TE 8.16. 149 through 157 Bathurst Street, rental housing demolition application final report. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation? Seeing none, any questions of staff? No, Councillor Cressy. I'm gonna move the staff recommendations and I just wanna extend my thanks to staff and the new property owner, Allied, for working collaboratively to make this work. Very good, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, all right, TE 8.17, official plan amendment 273 and 2 Tecumseh Street and 125 through 133 Niagara Street, zoning bylaw amendment applications, request for directions report. I have a deputant listed, William Kukuran. Good morning, William. Let's just make sure your button's lit in front of you there. And you'll have five minutes and you can watch your time over here. Stay nice and close to the microphone. began developing this project, um, there was quite a lot of feedback, particularly from the company, and the, um, the report describes the public reaction and some of the changes that have been made. Unfortunately, I think the new plan has not correctly addressed some of the problems that were inherent with the size of the design and um, I don't think the meeting that we had that uh, was on April 9th that the council, Councillor Cressy was at, that was the only time that anyone in the neighborhood had seen the substantial changes that were um, made to this plan. Um, for instance, one of the uh, 
taller buildings that was 38 stories has been reduced to 30, but an open area of plaza where there's an iconic smokestack that you can see from Wellington Street is now occupied by, I believe, to 12, 14 story building. Um, that isn't even mentioned in the plan. I believe a lot of the impacts of these buildings will have a um, negative effect on Niagara Street and the Niagara Street area, more so than what the original um, plan was. There's uh, quite a lot in the, uh, in the study regarding the effects of the buildings um, for Fort York and the Niagara Street destructor, but there's very little um, mentioned as to the effects on the Niagara Street and the Niagara Street neighborhood. Um, my other concern is that there's not much uh, addressed toward traffic both when the project is finished and what will be happening on the construction um, side of things. Uh, if the report's to be believed, at least one of the four entrances into that property will not be used because it will be uh, part of the expanded Stanley Park, which means all the construction traffic and um, future traffic will be directed down Niagara Street to Tecumseh or behind Niagara Street um, onto the property, which leaves us as sort of a kind of a traffic island in the middle of a major construction site. I also think that there's been um, nothing addressed in the plan that um, or addresses the fact that we do have an 1895 neighborhood that a substantial development is going on literally feet away and the, um, that how our, our houses are going to be protected or guaranteed from the um, development. I think that the, um, there, there should be definitely more public feedback before Council recommends on proceeding with the uh, development. I know the um, LPAP meeting is in January, so uh, I don't know if there's time but to uh, have anything done between then. But I think the majority of people in our in the neighborhood, unless they were at the meeting that that was in uh, that Joe was at, would have no idea what the exact nature of the new design is. And I, some of the decisions, um, especially like regarding traffic, I think you have to have more neighbor, uh, more input than just, with all due respect, the um, bureaucrats in the traffic department working it out, um, which is sort of what's indicated in the plan, I believe. Okay, are those your comments? Those are my comments. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the deputy? No, seeing none, thank you for your time today. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this? Please come forward and tell us who you are. Hello, my name is Shelly Ann Pereira. I live at 801 King Street, King and Niagara. Um, I have only received one piece of information on this, and so I went to the appeal tribunal and they informed me about this morning, and that's why I'm here. I, the, the, I, I moved into that neighborhood because my building is, what, 13 stories. We have a beautiful uh, roof garden. This building that they want to put in is 30 stories and 22 stories. It's going to block all of our view. It's going to block the sun. Uh, the amount of traffic it's going to happen there, it, it's just bad as it is, and it's going to make it worse. Um, 
I, I agree with the previous gentleman that we haven't had been provided with sufficient information, an opportunity to put our voices in. Um, and I really think that we should have some more debate about this because this is going to affect everybody in that area. There's a beautiful uh, park that people walk their dogs and everything there. And this, this building, it's just going to block the ent our entire view of, of the uh, lake. That is not fair to us because when I purchased, I purchased to, to have that beautiful view. This is gonna affect my property value and I think we need more consultation on this because like I said, I've only received one thing for the, um, you know, the tri appeal tribunal um, and this whole designs, it's only today I actually got an opportunity. They were supposed to email me the plans, they never did. Um, and it's it, the first time I'm actually seeing the plans are today. So uh, I, I would really like further consultation. I, I don't think we were thoroughly informed. And that's Those are all your remarks? Yeah. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? No? Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Are there you. any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? No? Okay. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing none, I Councillor Cress. I have this motion to come before you. I just, it's just waiting. We're just waiting for a second. So why don't you begin your remarks while the clerk finishes? Okay. Councillor Layton. I'll, I'll drag the clock for a little bit here. Uh, simply because uh, the, the application was first put in when I was a local councillor. Um, and it was, it was very unique in that before the application came in, the, uh, the, the owner, the developer, did a series of workshops uh, knowing that this was a very unique site and needed some additional care. Now, if you actually rewind even further, we did a review of the secondary plan not that long ago. And I was kind of of the opinion, you don't redo a secondary plan and then allow for a significant change to that secondary plan. Because the community was out front of the development. On this particular site, they said one tall building element. It could have some mid-rise, it didn't speak to density, but it said one tall building element in a rough location on the map. And I wasn't convinced that, that there was cause to reopen the file. But the other difference that was there was there was another site further east, uh, now the stacked market, otherwise known as, oh, what was it? 28 Bathurst, thank you, Joe. That in, in that time, since this application was brought forward and that original secondary plan was done, they actually contemplated three buildings on that site. It was a Build Toronto project we managed to dial it back to be no buildings on that site and the future site of a park. Uh, so the, the dynamics of the neighborhood changed and the amount of developable space in the neighborhood changed quite significantly. Now through the course of those three uh, meetings that the developer put forward, um, which were both kind of a blessing and a curse. It was nice to have a dialogue before an application came in, but when it's developer led, it makes it particularly tricky uh, because men, it, I, I, I don't believe there's as great an opportunity for dissenting voices. Uh, and it tended to be a lot of urbanists from across the city uh, and students of planning and design rather than local community members. Not that they weren't present, they were present and they were certainly invited, we made sure of it, but it, uh, th that was typically the crowd. And it wasn't until the third meeting that the, the building elevation started to play in and we got to what is classically the dialogue in this chamber and at other public meetings about building height and massing. Um, but there were some innovative elements that were put into the development that I think at least made, a, made enough of a case that it was time to look at the conclusions of the review of the secondary plan with a new set of eyes. Um, which is why at that point in time we didn't tell the developer to go straight to the LPAT uh, because we thought that there was sufficient information there to say perhaps we, exam we should re-examine this. One, one point on that that I'll make is around 
what's labeled building one it didn't have any heritage association with it when when we did our secondary plan partly because you couldn't tell you didn't know what was underneath and in the course of time the applicant demonstrated that there was information that he was bringing forward that would perhaps constrain him on the site but at the same time do better justice to the area's heritage uh, than the city actually expected from him. And when you look at the original design for this site, when it had a previous owner, we had a public meeting, there were pitchforks and, and torches lit, uh, and it was three buildings on a giant podium that would have just blocked the entire neighborhood off from, uh, uh, from, from the, the south. Um, I'm still not a huge fan of building three, but uh, again, it, what, one of those pieces was uh, the proximity to the railway tracks, and if staff are satisfied, it's tough for me to give an engineering uh, rationale for you not to have building three on there. Um, I think in the long term, though, the one piece of the secondary plan that I would protect the most is that City of Toronto works yard and the future of it. Right now, it's green on our official uh, on our official plan map, and I really hope it stays that way. Thank you. <clears throat> I think we're almost there with the, the amendment. Just a sec, John. A hush fell over the room. House fair. Okay. Councillor Cressy. Uh, well, thank you. And, and I'll begin, and thank you to clerks for placing an amendment which speaks first and foremost, and, and I think this is in regards to one of the comments we heard from the deputants, is a detailed transportation study as part of the site plan, looking at both existing and future and a community process related to it, as well as two minor amendments related to an aspirational endeavor around arts and culture and the above grade improvements on Tecumseh. Uh, let me begin my remarks, first of all, uh, by thanking um, the former councillor, Councillor Layton, who just spoke in much greater detail than I expected, actually, uh, for a file no longer in his ward, um, who led a process alongside uh, the applicant, the staff, our city staff, and the community around revisioning for this site. And, and a long process, and a process that resulted in a, in a public meeting on a, without prejudice, confidential application, because uh, this is part of a settlement process that was brought to the full community in the spring, and which has led to further changes in front of us today. And I, I do want to acknowledge and thank the applicant for being part of that, because it's easy, as we see often, for uh, applicants to use the legal process to not engage with the community. And in this case, uh, there was a legal process underway, but continued engagement with the community and engagement, especially on transportation that's going to continue going forward. Uh, this project is a significant one, and it's a large one. It involves four buildings ranging from two to 30 stories. Uh, and it is, I believe, a project that will ultimately create a true, complete community. And by that, when I talk about a complete community, a community, first of all, that people can actually live in. Whether you're raising a family with 20% two bedrooms and 10% three bedrooms, there's actually space to raise your kids there. 
whether you're on a low or high income, uh, $6 million from the Section 37 is going into affordable housing on site, on site in the development, which is critical. And the report speaks to a commitment to seek to increase that where we can. So it's a community that you can live in based on the size of the units and the presence of affordable housing. A community that is livable because of the inclusion of on-site parkland, but also a community that you can get around in, in our dense and increasingly vibrant downtown core, walking and cycling. In fact, we're building in the mixed-use cycling pedestrian trail as part of this. Those are important, important pieces that we need to do on every development that are taking place here. Now, many of the changes that have occurred over the course of this development, especially since the spring, include the adjustments of heights and massing, in particular some of the massing related to buildings on Niagara on the north side. Those are important changes. Um, the process for the community is not done yet. Uh, while we are bringing this forward to council for the broad strokes in, in moving this forward as it relates to the transportation study and construction management. Both of those will be developed and done in consultation with the neighborhood. Uh, but I will close again by saying that you know, change is never easy, especially in our neighborhoods. But in this growing city of ours, I think our commitment has to be as councillors that that change is going to be both equitable and livable. And I think in this context, with an applicant willing to engage with us, we've done that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions of the mover? No. Anyone else to speak? No. All those in favor? Opposed? That carried. I saw that vote. Um, moving right along. This takes us to TE 8.18, alterations to a property designated under Part 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 52 Boswell. Uh, members and members of the public, please note that there's a uh, also in a, a supplementary 18A attached to this. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, are there any questions of staff? No, Councillor, who am I got here? Clayton. I'll move the recommendations in the report. And the supplementary? And the preservation board letter, do you have yeah, And from the preservation board, yeah. Okay. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.19, alterations to a heritage property intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, uh, 39 Commissioner Street. I have uh, one deputant listed here. And again, there's a, a, supp a, a communication from the preservation board. Uh, the deputant, Therese Sears. Good morning. Okay. Uh, my name is Therese Sears, Executive Director of Urban Domain Inc., which is the owner of 39 Commissioner Street. Uh, if you are not familiar with the building, it's uh, this handsome uh, historic fire hall in the Portlands, my pride and joy. Um, first, I must say I'm excited about the Portland's Redevelopment Initiative uh, and believe it will create an incredible, vibrant new community in the Portland's. Uh, the reason I am here uh, is really for a point of information and to put my voice on the record. Uh, it's important to note that the plans for 39 Commissioner Street are being made around me, not with me. Uh, Waterfront Toronto is acting like it already owns my building, and it does not. Um, still, uh, I do not want to stand in the way of uh, the proposed alterations, uh, because I do think that uh, they uh, go a long way in uh, bringing the waterfront and the initiative uh, uh, to a point where uh, the rerouting the dawn can happen. Are those all your remarks? Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much for your time. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? No? Are there any questions of staff? No? Uh, Councillor Fletcher. Move the staff report. So we have a motion to move the staff report. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. 
Item TE 8.20, Residential Demolition Application 155 Stevenson Avenue. We have a deputant, Patrick Bronicki. Good morning. Ah, uh, you brought some assistance. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, my name is Patrick Brunicki. I'm, I work for uh, Hydro One, and I'm the applicant for this uh, demolition proposal. Uh, this is my colleague, uh, Jeff Cridland. He's the project manager of this project, and uh, we're here to ensure the confidence of the community in this uh, proposal for uh, future uh, uh, reliability in the electrical grids that we're planning on doing the work here. And I will leave the work with, uh, or to have Jeff say a couple words about this project. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to speak in front of you. Um, this, this project right now is, uh, like uh, Patrick was saying, is to, uh, to bolster the, the reliability of power in the Maine and Danforth area. Uh, with the with the support of Toronto Hydro, uh, we have uh, we have our demolition permit for the 157 Stevenson Avenue, and we are looking to finish uh, with the the demolition permit for 155. We need these two uh, pieces of property to uh, to expand this uh, this station in a safe and uh, a outage sensitive uh, uh, process of putting, putting these new, we're, we're gonna be putting in two new transformers uh, into, this, into this property and uh, to support, like I was saying earlier, to support Toronto Hydro's uh, expected growth in, in load that's in, uh, that's in the, the Danforth and Maine uh, area. Um, I just, want, just wanted to add uh, the recommendations that in uh, the first item saying that there's uh, no permit for replacement buildings on the site. Uh, we have not applied for any new building permits as of right now, but in the next five to 10 years, there will be a proposal for um, uh, proposed new buildings there that will replace the buildings that are currently gonna be demolished. Uh, we will be doing a couple cable vaults with uh, where the transformers will be uh, stationed and uh, new foundations will be put in place there. And then in the next five to 10 years, there'll be a new building coming up where the location of the uh, residential air, uh, building is uh, 155. And that will be uh, a new building there uh, in the next couple of years, in the next decade or so. I think that's all we have. Uh, if there's we'll any go. questions. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for the deputant? Councillor Bradford. Thanks. Uh, so the new building that you're contemplating now, five years down the road, what what type of building is that? It, so I will I'll put up a, re a rendering of that building. So this building is going to be uh, what's what's going to happen with this building? Toronto Hydro will need to expand their switch yard, and we will need be needed to build this building to support Toronto Hydro's uh, expansion. So, so at this so at this point in time, we'll be putting in the foundation for this building. This building here will be what we what we call as a as a uh, metal clad building, which will hold uh, the switching, uh, which is uh, the switching equipment that's required for for Toronto Hydro to move the power throughout the area. And so these are the two new transformers that we were going, we're going to install. We'll be in extending this connection to the, to the new transformers. The old transformers are pres presently sitting here and here. And what we need to do is build this new structure and new transformers prior to tying in or prior then to taking out these old transformers uh, out of service. So what's the, uh, 
What's the process for this in terms of a zoning, the site zoning, this? It has two single detached homes on it right now. There is uh, currently one repair garage there where it's currently, or it used to be like a doggy daycare, but uh, we purchased that and we did receive the demolition permit for that building. So it's like an, a one story uh, brick and block building that we're p proposing to demolish as well as the uh, right next door, there's that uh, old house there called uh, 155 Stevenson, um, which we can also show a street view if you want. I have a, another image. No, I, I'm familiar with it. I'm wondering uh, what is permitted on the site on 155 now as it relates to your contemplated proposal here. Um, in terms of the zoning, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the current, uh, zoning there is right now. I think there's like a, it's in in the industrial area, but there is some mixed use there with residential. Uh, but we would have to confirm that just to make sure that it's still uh, applicable. Uh, I'm not sure what we would have to do in terms of rezoning or if we have to, but uh, that's why we're here to discuss that and make, sh uh, make sure we all have a collective agreement moving forward. Okay, so we're not gonna work out that collective agreement here. We're not gonna discuss it here, but we should have a conversation about that and your plans for the site. Uh, I'm gonna move the recommendations and I'm comfortable with that, but this is, this is something that we'll need to discuss. Absolutely. Any other questions of the deputants? No, questions of staff? Or sorry, are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, you. Are there any questions of staff? No, Councillor Bradford? When to move the recommendations. In the so you have an option. Which ones are you moving? Uh, to permit the. So number two, uh, uh, permit it with the conditions? Correct. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item. So this is just for those who are watching, this is the motion we just approved. Okay, moving to the next item. Uh, TE 8.21, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit located at One Old Mill Drive. Uh, Rick Tadale. Rick? Hi, come on up. So you'll have five minutes to make your comments and you can tr watch your time over here to my right. Welcome. Thanks everyone. Um, my name is Rick Tadeo. I'm the president of the uh, of Goodfellas Web on Pizza. We have five locations in the GTA. And uh, just wanted to give you a breakdown as to why we're here today or why I'm here today. Um, it's based on the Cafe Boulevard permit um, that was issued for this location. The original building permit application was submitted on September 10, 2015. The building permit was issued on February 22, 2016 for a restaurant interior alteration, permit number 1522316BLD00BA. The outdoor patio drawing was submitted to Toronto Transportation Services on or around the date of November 15th. The drawings were received by front, count, front counter staff. Uh, our architect designer was informed that the fees would be determined once the examiner reviews the scope of work. Uh, the patio was built based on these drawings with the recommendation that the railings that were installed be clear to assist in the uh, view uh, based on the, the corner location of the patio. And th this recommendation was by uh, Toronto Transportation Services at the time. Toronto Municipal so License and Standards issued a permit for Boulevard uh, our, Bo our Boulevard Cafe uh, permit on July 14th, 2016. Permit number R uh, R5746470053. Uh, 
Construction commenced in July of 2016 on the outdoor uh, patio based on the drawing submitted to the Transportation Service Services and Toronto Municipal License and Standards. Um, this uh, particular project was a costly one, which exceeded over $50,000 to construct. And one, it is one of the major reasons why we signed a long-term lease in this particular location, because it's a little on the outskirts of Bloor West Village. Um, and so we needed uh, something to attract, uh, obviously, our customer base. Um, we, we then uh, were in the process of renewing um, the patio license um, and we were at that point when we went to renew we basically were um, what's the right word we were, we were it was stated that we could not uh, renew due to the fact that um, there was a sight line uh, violation I believe um, that was brought up so basically, two years later, uh, that's what we received, a notice of encroachment and sightline obstruction. Um, I believe somebody here, I'm uh, not here, sorry, somebody within the department had made an error. And the issue is that obviously it's gonna cost a lot of money to uh, modify this particular patio due to the fact that it was made out of a very expensive track material along with glass paneling, et cetera. Um, and again, one of the major reasons why we leased this particular location was because of the uh, approvals and, and the patio itself. Uh, I believe that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the deputant? No? Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Ramlaw? Richard? That's our architect designer. He, uh, he could not make it today. Okay, thank you very much. Not a problem. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, uh, any questions of staff? No? Uh, so I'm going to move the staff recommendation, which is to deny. Uh, transportation staff have made it very clear in the report that this is uh, a sight line issue having to do with uh, the sight line of drivers turning at this corner and you know I, as all members of council know uh, the public is simply not willing to put up with us doing anything to impair the safety of people trying to cross the street in the city of Toronto anymore so I'm, I'm gonna have to take the staff recommendation on this all those in favor Oppose that carries. Uh, TE 8.22, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application to include a permanent enclosed lo located at 1006 Bloor Street West, Wart Westmoreland Avenue flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, any questions of staff? No, nope. Councillor Bailao. I would like to move to uh, grant, so move approval. Um, this is a very exciting project uh, in the neighborhood that we're looking forward to have uh, a cinema reopening uh, in the neighborhood. Um, and this is the restaurant right beside it. So uh, we're uh, hoping that it all comes together very soon and that we can start enjoying uh, uh, the facility and the preservation of this great heritage uh, facility. So. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Item TE 8.23, uh, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 1640 DuPont Street, Edwin Street flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? What are you doing? Seeing none. Uh, questions of staff? No. Uh, Councillor Bailao. Again, I move uh, approval. This is a patio very much loved by the community and actually the only reason why they were refused is because they're using planters, which are actually quite nice, to be honest with you, as fencing. And so we would like to keep the planters and so I move approval. Okay, uh, questions of mover? No, anyone else to speak? No, all those in favor? Approved, that's carried. All right, um, 
2.24, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 247 Wallace Avenue. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, any questions of staff? None, Councillor Bala. Thank you, and uh, once again, we'd like to move approval. This is uh, one of our many breweries that we have. Uh, very close to uh, what we will hope it will be a great public round that Metrolinx will not cancel on us, <laughs> as per their word, uh, but it's very close to that, and it's a small patio that uh, the brewery is asking for, and so we would like to grant it to them. We live in hope. Any questions of the mover? No? Sorry, sir. I'm moving approval, but <laughs> so <laughs> you, you'd only it, be creating risk. It's a great risk. place. You can you can all go and visit. <laughs> okay. Um, so with that, on the motion to approve, all those in favor, opposed, that carried. Okay. So now, did I do five two five five two? No. Yeah. <laughs> Refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at five five two College Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation? Seeing none. Any questions of staff? Councillor Layton, you're out of your seat. While clerks don't have my a, a motion on this, I, I'm going to move a motion to defer indefinitely. Okay, we have That's a motion okay. to defer. Rather than just deny it, um, we'll see if they can't come up with some magical scheme that makes us then accept it as that. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion to defer indefinitely. All those in favor, approved. That carries. Now, we did all of Church Francis to 34, so we go to item 34. Yeah, ready to proceed? We do have a deputy listed. Uh, item TE 8.34, temporary adjustments to parking regulations for the 2019 Christmas market delegated. I have a deputy, Jane Robinson, Goodrum and Wartz Neighborhood Association. Jane? They, they're not coming for this one not or coming. the next one for which they're registered. Ah, okay. Well, register for both. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Questions of staff? No. Councillor Cressy. Oh, wait, or which who, who? On 35. Well, let's just get this one out of the way. We're here. No, 34. We're in 34. We, who wants to move 34? Councillor Wong Tam has moved it. All those in favor? Well, actually, carry. I also want to just speak to it very quickly. And I, and so I this just. This has, has to do with it the is delegated <laughs> portion. What's that? The delegated portion. Was okay. Fine. Yeah. So I'll speak to speak. the next item. Okay, Maybe very good. Will. So 34, all in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.35, temporary adjustments to traffic and parking regulations for 2019 Toronto Christmas Market, non-delegated. Jane Robinson, not here. Questions of staff? No. Councillor Wong Tam, you said you had some comments? Uh, I do, and I'm sure Councillor uh, Cressy would like as, to speak as well. Um, and there's also a technical amendment. I just want to thank, um, so the Christmas market, is. this is a new neighborhood for myself, and it's, I believe it's a new neighborhood for Councillor Cressy as well. Um, the Christmas market is a well-loved uh, seasonal institution that brings hundreds of thousands of visitors to the distillery and the adjoining neighborhoods. And throughout the years, um, its growing success, I think, was, uh, was almost unchecked which means that there were visitors coming from out of town, largely by vehicular uh, movement, uh, that was really just, they wanted to come in and enjoy the, uh, the festivities. But it also created um, uh, this incredible condition that was very difficult for the local residents who lived there. Uh, literally, vehicles were stopped dead in its tracks. Vehicles couldn't come in. And as condominium development uh, was taking place, uh, they were also losing many of the surface parking lots. I think last winter alone, there were a cars that were parked along Lakeshore and then had to walk north and, and south along Lakeshore to reach its final destination. Um, and through all that time, surprisingly enough, there was never a traffic plan that was ever conducted uh, by the uh, producers of the Christmas market. And this report, I would I'd like to say that even though it doesn't uh, provide any uh, 
uh, history to the report, I think we, we need to thank uh, a certain individuals. Uh, I know that there are staff at the Councillor Cressy's office that really championed this. Uh, in my own staff, it would be Lisa Hoffman and Megan Poole, uh, who really had to work hard to make sure that uh, a report around traffic generation, third party produced, was going to be generated, and that staff were going to sit down with the Christmas market and all the stakeholders to find resolution. This was, um, I think, largely something that should have happened a lot sooner, but it did not. But it was certainly one of the brewing issues. And I'm really proud that right after the last election, this was one of the first things that we took on immediately after the Christmas market. And we said that if, uh, if there was going to be another one, of course we want there to be another one, is that we need to spend the entire year, and just about we spent the entire year working through these tra uh, traffic management issues. Uh, at the core of it is to ensure that pedestrians, uh, visitors, as well as residents are safe. And I want to thank staff for your hard work to come to the table, uh, and, uh, and also uh, Councillor Cressy and his staff to make sure that the, the, uh, our two wards could work together to, to find a resolution to this particular problem. Um, I just want to highlight that there are significant changes to traffic operations that will have to take place in order for this to work. Uh, I know that traffic operations uh, and signage will not do it on its own. This will have to be actively enforced, proactively communicated, because there will be visitors who have come for years without having to um, have any significant restrictions on vehicles. So that will, that will have to be in place along with the traffic operations, and they have to work in concert with one another in order for this traffic plan to really bring us success. So I want to thank the staff, the, the producers of the fi Christmas market, the residents of the local community for the incredible patience, uh, and, uh, and everyone else involved. I know we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, I think that we're all watching, and we're all committed to making sure that, uh, that we get the best outcome uh, this winter, and we welcome everybody to the market. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cressy. You have uh, so I have a technical amendment from staff that I can move. Um, and I think Councillor Wong Tam said it all, uh, the Christmas market has succeeded beyond anybody's wildest imaginations, which has created challenges for those who live there. And I just want to thank, uh, to echo Councillor Wong Tam's comments, her office, staff in my own office, city staff, the Toronto Christmas market, who hired the A group to do a comprehensive transportation study, and certainly residents of Goodrum and Warts. Uh, and the distillery broader neighborhood for all their hard work. Uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully an improved experience this year. So uh, any other members to speak? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Councillor Bailao, you held item TE 8.39, car share vehicle parking areas, yes. various locations. And I checked with staff, I had my uh, questions answered, and I can release that, Councillor. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam, you held TE 8.53, which is the always stop control at Mutual and Wood. Uh, yes, I did. I think clerks at that time uh, did not have the amendment prepared, but I know that it was sent by my staff. Uh, I would like to move uh, an alternative uh, um, amendment. And probably best to put the motion onto the screen just to, to provide clarity for everyone. Uh, 
Yes, thank you. So we would uh, strike uh, we would uh, strike recommendation number one, which was a staff report to refuse and to actually go ahead and install the all-way stop control at the corner of Mutual and Wood uh, to enhance protection for vulnerable road users under Vision Zero. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Members, um, we have about a dozen pieces of new business, only one of which I think is going to generate much debate, and it's quarter after 12. So we could make a decision to move through lunch uh, or to uh, have the lunch break and come back, well, pick up what we can by 12.30, have the lunch break and come back at 1.30. Do you want to just see where we're at? Okay, so let's check in again in about 10 minutes. Uh, so the next item of business I have is TE 8.59, the refusal of an application for a Boulevard Cafe permit located at 1638 Bloor Street, West Union, Unit 2, Indian Road, Flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes, sir. Welcome, you'll have five minutes and you can see your time over here to my right. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Sandeep Sandhu. I own the Dairy Queen store at, uh, at the location. And um, I bought the store five years ago. Um, it's, it's great for the, for the people in the, in the area. Um, it's summer times are really busy. And I have a letter from the dentistry, which is, which is right beside us. Um, they have no objection to, to the patio. I also have uh, a no objection letter from the landlord um, regarding the patio as well. And uh, it's a great place for patrons to come and enjoy dessert uh, when they come to Dairy Queen. Uh, Dairy Queen, this is the only Dairy Queen in a radius of 20 kilometers in the area. And, um, and the city did a poll um, and most of the, most of the people, residents, residents they, they approve. Um, so that's all I have to say, you know. Thank you. Um, I have a question for yeah. you, sir. Yeah. So the advice we received from staff yeah. is that this patio doesn't actually abut your business. It's not connected to your business. It's, 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 not, it's not beside it, but when I signed the lease uh, with the landlord, that was the arrangement that we would have exclusive use of the patio. And I have a letter from the... I, I understand, yeah. but um, the, the, it's not within your landlord's rights to uh, make a deal with you that is uh, contrary to our bylaws. We only permit patios that are attached to the business. So your landlord may have said that you have that right, but that's not something that our bylaw permits. Do you understand uh, that? Um, well, there's, there's customers who use the area all the time. I, I appreciate um, that, and, but and, I just and, want and to make sure that, like, did city staff communicate to you that we just don't let people buy, get a, a, a patio somewhere unless it's directly attached to their business, or we would have people applying all over the city? Did, did they communicate that to you? Um, the, the, the city staff. The city staff? No, they, they did not. So when you were refused, those reasons were not made? Yeah, well, they, yeah, they sent me that in the letter. But and in uh, the letter, does it make it clear that you can't have a patio for a portion of the boulevard that isn't connected to your business? Yes, but, okay. but I also That's have what the, I wanted to yeah, understand. But I also have the neighbor, uh, my neighbor, the, the dentistry, um, uh, that when he signed the lease, he clearly knew um, that he had nothing to do with the patio. I understand that, but that's not the issue. When city staff sent you the refusal, did they make it clear that the City of Toronto does not permit you, irrespective of what your landlord wants or what the dentist wants, the City of Toronto does not permit you to have a patio that isn't attached to your business? That was communicated to you by city staff? Yes, that was in the letter. All right. Uh, Thank you. That's yeah. what I wanted to understand. I at wanted to make sure you were treated yeah. properly and had all the correct information. And at the same, at the same time, a refusal is going to affect, uh, you know, the business. I understand. Um, and it's going to affect the sales and, and customers as well. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Are there any other questions? No? Seeing none? Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? 
Seeing none, uh, so I'm going to be moving the staff recommendation, which is to deny. I think it would be uh, very dangerous if we start allowing businesses to get a lease on parts of the boulevard that aren't attached to their business and, and using them for patios. And I don't want to establish that precedent here. Uh, so all those in favor of the motion to deny, all those opposed, that carries. Uh, Item TE 8.60, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 798 Bloor Street West. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, I'm gonna have to just quickly check. Councillor Layton. This is your item, Councillor Layton. Which item is it? 60798 Bloor Street West Boulevard yes, Cafe. I'm sorry, I have a motion to approve the patio with the following conditions. One I'm, um, I'm struggling with, but I'm gonna get better at, and it's something my predecessor did, Councillor Panaloni, um, was he put a new, he put a, a new tree on every patio. This patio already has trees. I just want to make sure they're maintained. Um, so it's to approve the patio, some conditions around utility clearance, mm -hmm. protecting the uh, protecting the trees, and then uh, some time and, and noise. Um, so, any questions of the mover? Anyone else to speak on the item? All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. If you could just let me know what we're doing for a second. Yeah, I'm recording the sheet. Okay. Uh, item TE 8.70, alterations to a designated heritage property and authority to enter into a heritage easement agreement at 199 Bay Street, 25 King Street West, and 56 Young Street. Uh, I have no deputants listed. Are there any members of the public who do wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Wong, oh, any questions of staff? No, Councillor Wong Tan? Uh, yes, I would like to move a technical amendment. It was provided by the city solicitor. This item was referred back to our com uh, to community council. Uh, this amendment would be uh, amending, rec the motion I should say, would be amending recommendations five, six, and seven, and it's technical in nature. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, any questions of the mover? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, so, members, I have new information on item TE 8.77. Uh, I had asked to have some staff available to answer questions, and they are not available until after the lunch break. So that one, at least, we're going to have to hold off on until 1.30. Uh, item TE 8.79, Accroachment Agreement 1006, Bloor Street West, Ward 9. Uh, that's whose item? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Bailao. It's with relation to the patio that we just approved. So okay. we need to have the encroachment agreement. So on the letter, all those in favor, opposed, carried. On item TE 8.80, speed limit reduction, Fort York Boulevard. Uh, I believe that's Councillor Cressy's. I'd like to move the recommendations in my letter, please. All those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.81, parking amendment, Roxborough Street East. I believe that's Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you. There are recommendations in the letter. So I'll move On the letter, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, TE 8.82, 968 Bathurst Street, encroachment agreement, Councillor Layton. I'll move the recommendations in my letter. 
All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 8.83, safety at the intersection of Girard Street East and Pembroke Street. Uh, is that, is that Councillor Montan. <laughs> Sorry, the numbers change. I keep thinking I'm Ward 14. I get all confused. Not a problem. I'm still learning my boundaries. Um, I would like to move the recommendations in the letter, and just to note that uh, this is there's a revision, and we are uh, asking the report back to be November, and not October. So that should be the. That's a refer a report in November. That's Let's correct. Have that. Mm -hmm. November, okay. Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Mm -hmm. TE 8.84 Gerard Carlaw study, Councillor Fletcher. All those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.85, Regent Park Traffic Safety Plan, Councillor Wong Tam. Sorry, I would like Those to move the recommendations hang on. Oh, hang on. in the letter. Can I introduce? Yeah, yeah. You okay. Oh, 85 and 86, pardon me. Yes. Sorry, 85 and 86, I need a motion to introduce those two. Councillor Bradford, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Now we will do TE 8.85. Regent Park Traffic Safety Plan. Uh, thank you. I would like to move the uh, recommendations contained in the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 8.86, Parking Amendments, Campbell Avenue. Councillor Bailao, your letter eight on Campbell Avenue. Uh, move the recommendations on the letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. What's the new item? Councillor Cressy. So I understand Councillor Cressy has a piece of new business as well, but it's not ready yet. So that leaves just the two items that Councillor Bradford, the one that Councillor Cressy wants to introduce. Did you have something else as well, Councillor Matlow? Uh, I, I will also have one after lunch. You will have another item? Okay, so we're going to need to reconvene anyway for that. So with that, uh, I, I say that the meeting is recessed until 1.30. See you all back then. <laughs>